All right, I think this is the last section of chapter 12. Chapter 12 is very long. Uh, in this section, we'll be going over writing error messages to standard error instead of standard output. All right, cool. At the moment, we're writing all of our output to the terminal using the print line function. Most terminals provide two kinds of output, standard output for general information and standard error for error messages. This distinction enables users to choose to redirect the successful output of a program to a file, but still print error messages to the screen. Um, so yeah, what they're saying here is, typically when you run a program, especially in your command line, um, there are two streams that you should definitely take note of. One is standard output, and one is standard error. And standard error, like it sounds, is for your error messages so that if somebody is running a program and then collecting all of the information that they want, if an error does happen, um, the error doesn't clutter that. Instead, it's put on a separate stream so they can focus on it. The print line function is only capable of printing to standard output, so we have to use something else to print the standard error. Okay. Checking where errors are written. First, let's observe how the content printed by Minigrep is currently being written to standard output, including any error message we want to write to standard error instead. We'll do that by redirecting the standard output stream to a file while also intentionally causing an error. We won't redirect the standard error stream, so any content sent to standard error will continue to display on the screen. So what are we doing? We want to run our program and figure out where our messages are being written to, whether it be successful or error. Mostly we care about our errors right now. So we're going to do that by running our program and then writing all of the successful output to a file, but we're not going to redirect the error output because we want to see the error output and it should display on our screen, at least ideally. Command line programs are expected to send error messages to the standard error stream so we can still see error messages on the screen even if we redirect the standard output stream to a file. Our program is not currently well behaved. We're about to see that it saves the error messages output to a file instead. Yeah, yeah. The way to determine this behavior is by running the program with a, I think it's greater than sign, it's, you can see it, and the file name, output.txt that we want to redirect the standard output stream to. We won't pass any arguments, which should cause an error. All right, so let's just mock that out. Get our editor up. And let's clear this output. Actually, we don't need to clear it. So we're gonna run our program. We're not gonna pass any of the mandatory things like query or contents or query or file, sorry, it's query and file. And we're going to write the standard output to a file. So output dot text. And as you see in our output, we didn't see anything. However, if we look at the content of the file, so cat output dot text, problem parsing arguments, not enough arguments. So the error went straight to the file. The less than syntax tells the shell to write the content of standard output to output.txt instead of the screen. We didn't see the error message we were expecting printed to the screen. So that means it must have ended up in the file. This is what output.txt contains. And it has the error message, which I demonstrated down here. Yep our error message is being printed to standard output. It's much more useful for error messages like this to be printed to standard error so only data from a successful run ends up in the file. We'll change that. Printing errors to standard error. We'll use the code in listing 12-24 to change how error messages are printed. Because of the refactoring we did early in this chapter, all the code that prints error messages is in one function, main. The standard library provides the ePrintLine macro that prints to the standard error stream. So let's change the two places we're calling 
print line to print errors to use ePrint line instead. Okay, so in main, we have these two errors, right? And it looks like all we do is add ease to them. And then run this again. And we see our error here. It is not written to file. Okay, we just had to add an E. After changing print line to E print line, let's run the program again in the same way without any arguments and redirecting standard output with the less than error. Did that and I got to see the error right there. Now we see the error on screen and output.txt contains nothing, which is the behavior we expect of command line programs. Let's confirm it contains nothing because I don't think we wrote anything to it. So it might have the old output. No, no, it's empty. Cool, empty. Let's run the program again with arguments that don't cause an error but still redirect standard output to a file, like so. All right, so they want to run the program again in the scenario where it's supposed to work. Run to poem.txt, right? And we're going to redirect the standard output to output.txt. And now, since we have our change, if there are any errors, we'll see them in our terminal, and they should not be written to the file. Okay, I run. We see zero errors. And if we do a cat on the output file, just look at the contents, we see the two lines. And it's two lines because it's a case sensitive search. So capital T O should not be found here. So we just did this. We won't see any output to the terminal, and output.txt will contain our results. And here are the results, which I demonstrated right here. This demonstrates that we are now using standard output for successful output and standard error for error output as appropriate. Summary. This chapter recaps some of the major concepts you've learned so far and covered how to perform common IO operations in Rust. By using command line arguments, files, environment variables, and the ePrint line macro for printing errors, you are now prepared to write command line applications. By using the concepts in previous chapters, your code will be well organized, store data effectively in appropriate data structures, handle errors nicely, and be well tested. Next, we'll explore some Rust features that were influenced by functional languages, closures, and iterators. And with that, that's the end of chapter 12. Yeah, I um, hope that was useful, hope that was entertaining. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Outside of that, peace.